Remember my four hundred dollar storm rod that I broke, snapped in top and bottom. Yeah. Well. Snap tip off. No, no, snap the tip. Oh, I, I snap part of the tip, so it's rebuilt, right? With a bodgy glue job. So the bottom half, remember I snapped it in half? Where's the snap? Well, a couple years ago, I snapped another $400 rod. <laughs> and this was a tomato steak. Last two years, this has been holding up tomato plants. <laughs> so I pulled it out of the veggie garden pile. This was snapped off, so I glued a new one of them off the old broken one. Yeah. Eight foot storm rod again. Ah, <laughs> first bass. Yeah, just ripping that hard body back, mate. And it was, the other bit was it's just straight on the start of that weed, so. I thought the other one flicked out, like that's the second one that's come out. You see how the weed gets thick here, so you gotta sort of get off it to draw them. That was easy. Hey? Yeah, they're just chasing it. They're cold. Yeah, well that's three, that's three, right? One, two, three, with the hard body. There's a fatty, this one. So I reckon, perch, estuary perch. Oh cool, we got both going. And that's on, the, that's on a deep diver, so what I'm gonna do, I'll rig up my other rod, I'll put a shallow diving lure on. And if you put beetle spin on a worm hook, we can work the outside edge and the inside edge together. It's a nice fish. It's beautiful. I'll go through my lure box and I'll just explain what I'm looking for in these bass lures. See, at the moment I had that hard body on so I can chop down the edge of the weed bed which is anything like this but I want something to go over the top of the weeds as well I might just stick with one with a single hook little shallow diver gold gold cart color I'll try that but all the bright Larry lures like that's just a magic bass color that the gold all the literary colours for bass and all the natural colours for brim. I'm gonna put that on that. So that's three quick not wrong rod. That's three really quick fish, so and we got a pattern on the second one and we confirmed the pattern on the third one. You had that rubber the whole time in front of us and it's not so much um I was catching fish behind you because of skill, it was more the hard body bites working. Same deal with my blades though, with bass, I use the stuff I don't like. If it's, if it's a good brim lure, I try not to use it. Bass like bright, leery, gay looking stuff. One of the important things with these hard bodies is actually the speed of the retrieve. They, you can't wind a lure hard enough for a bass to swim away, like for a bass to beat it. And it's the sonics that trigger them. Nah, yeah, it's, people sometimes, you, you get into brim mode, you, you're fishing slow and methodically for these brim. But when you get the bass, you gotta get into bass mode and you gotta change the direction, pause and crank. And usually it's just on the crank back that you get slammed. Well, I think the spinner might be just the deadly, deadly lure today.
get him out of that weed. And so that's the spinner starting to work now, so. You little chunky. We called that too. See what Roger was doing, he put a little spinner on, but he, he put a uh, weedless hook on the plastic. And that way when he was working, we're just ripping these hard bodies through and he's sinking a bit deeper into the weed. They're nice fish though. They're fun fish when you get them like that, especially in weed. And see he's gone that like speckled the, the red darker lure. Just, Watermelon red flake that one. Yeah, where well, your favourite colour is bloodworm normally, isn't it? Yeah, bloodworm and gudgeon. Yeah. We have another little chunky bass. So we've got a chunky bass and we've got ourselves a chunky perch so far. I like the gill raker there. The gill raker has got a series of... Oh yeah, that's sharp bass too. Yeah. It's like serrated around. Or as always get done by that point. Yep. Anyway, our pattern's working well because we've started on that corner. That's our four fish. But what it was, since from the tree where I was talking to you last, we come through here and didn't get a bite. But you can see the weed bed tapers into this bank. And that's exactly where Roger got his fish. And we would pretty well called it. We sort of had a feeling that, you know, one, two, three to that tree on that corner. As this tapers in, you think, well, there's probably another three to be had here. That's good. I told you, riding that we're fishing in about one foot. No, it's a bass. We're fishing about one foot of water. I'm just saying to Roger, there's, there's a little thin ribbon weed line. And I just come out like a jack in the boxes and not what, a couple of minutes, we got that one. They're always really good shallow divers. None of them got hooks on them. You'll be right. We're up here now. There's a series of pump house sites. So I've just got Roger to roll in here. First cast, you've got a little bass straight away. Because what happens is the main river's 17, 8, 7 and a half really. And in here, it just gets so much warmer, all the weed beds and everything, and the lack of current rotates it up two or three degrees. So there's a series of little pump sites along here. We'll go along and hit every one of these. <laughs> I just said to Roger, instead of casting, let's just throw a lure out the back and troll for a bit, see what's here. And I troll for about 20 seconds, and the rod kept whacking, 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 whacking. And I'm thinking, I'm hitting bottom, hitting bottom, hitting bottom, hitting bottom. Then I realised I was dragging that thing along for about 10 minutes, or for about 30 seconds anyway. Well, we know they're here. Let's just do a little bit of trolling. What the trolling does is it allows me to get a lure, like a 10, 12 foot diving lure down to 14 feet. And uh, he didn't take long to whack it, so. Keep trolling, you reckon? Might as well, eh? Pretty good fish. We got lazy. It's the start of the season, so we're looking for skills of bass. So we've just got our hard body. Oh, watch the line there, Rod. We've just got our hard body. He feels, he's got some weight in this guy. And we're sitting in about three and a half metres of a lure that gets to about three and a half metres when you let enough line out. Nice fish. Come on, don't you pop. He's dogging. Nah. That's what I'm seeing first. I don't think I've had a bass fight this hard for a while. He's a silver. He's not huge, huge. He just big fight. And you can see how silver he is. He's, that's what we're looking for. This is exactly what we're looking for, these guys. Basically, 
on the sound of there you can see three and a half litres and we're trawling pretty quick we're going with the current so I just put a lot of idle into the into the uh, trawl so if I see anything that looks good I just slow it down to idle it for a minute put it in idle for a sec and I'll let them go again got a belly full too like this that's more the school bus that we're looking for like that nice oops and once again that was in three and a half meters so we'll stick to that depth if they were in four and a half meters i would go to a bigger deeper diving lure again if they were in two and a half meters i'd go to a shallower diving lure as long as it trawls straight yeah that's the thing that's brands don't count with lures it's all about and see that little atomic there and then rolling because of the speed yeah yeah you can't you've got to have like a dead true lure and sometimes it's just a matter of putting a um i've got a rapala i know brands don't matter but it's a diver. well sometimes it's just a matter of putting a uh, snap clip on and just getting a true center But yeah, if they don't, if you can't feel that rod, do, 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 pardon me, if you can't feel that rod tapping away, because we're going so quick, what I'm doing is putting it in neutral, anyway, letting it. Rolling. Yeah. 100%. I'd be going. No, I'd be going. You. No. No. You're going to dig in. Uh, I'd be going that looking at it the too deep dive oh you know what they're just your suji shrimp that could be all right but otherwise i'd go the brown one oh it's not a deep yeah look just dig in there's hundreds of them there's a couple in there that i just look at and think they're just going to catch fish and you might have to put a hook. that one there that one there that one there you're gonna have to put hooks on them though Find one i might there. just grab that one i've got a mic so hooks on it no no fuck it that one That's, oh no hooks that one that one no hooks just yeah, the eco gears there, I don't know. Come on. Turn the camera off. I didn't even know we were rolling. I was just going through lures with Roger. But that pause that we were talking about earlier, my lure probably floated all the way to the surface then. As soon as I clicked it back into gear, little bass whacked it and he's only a little bass too but I mean we worked out there was a bite down on the breakaway last time we were here we worked out there was a bite at Windsor Bridge and now we're up the terraces and there's obviously a bite up here as well Right two metres, but the sandbar here, I can see it on the other side there, shallow as anything. Oh, that could be a little one on me now, I can't tell. Fish. You got one? Yeah. Look at that, and that's so what I was saying about brands with lures. You just switched on two fish in a row. I've got a jackal chubby, chubby on, you've got an eco gear copy. So it doesn't really matter what lure, as long as it's does its job. Pro -lure atomic. Yeah, well it was spinning around on you the pro lure and the atomic was spinning around. Yeah. I think you can fix that by putting a snap on it and then you can also remember they're probably awesome brim lures if they're doing that and like make you go a lot slower. This might be a little bit bigger or the same. Oh, it's a bigger. oh yeah, here's a nice one. Nice looking one. Perch, that's why. Perch. Little perch. Good. 
Ooh. His mates just followed us in. Oh, I don't have any tea bag. This is what we're looking for. You see that bump there? See all the fish are stacked on the back of that bump? That's exactly what we're looking for. School bass. And that's the bump there. Wait for it, wait for it. Still hitting bottom, there must be little fish on there. No. No. I'm gonna troll him off if it is. Back to that nice two and a half. Yeah, I keep getting whack, whack, whack. Get off there. Yep, yeah, I'm on. So that, that lure just went over that little ridge and bump and picked up that school of fish that was behind it. They're not big fish, but it's just a matter of use, like learning your sound or reading your sound or looking for the structure underneath and then getting that lure into their face. That's all it is. Look, they're tiny, these fish. But I mean, we come up here and we'll find a hole later in the season that'll be full of big fish and there's no difference. Now we could have marked that spot too and then just sat there and um, bladed or jigged them up, but we're not into that. We're just going to keep looking for fish. They're only small. Wee! I thought it was my boat. <laughs> you know, just smash it down. Alright, let's go look for another lot. Piece of net there. There's all that net there, and there's all that net going through the trees there. It's about 100 metres of net. This, this river's never policed. This shows how you can imagine how many people poach here. Fish, real fish, real fish. I just got whacked. No! I was going to say, I just got belted. I just got belted as you got belted. That was a big fish, Roger. Spot lock, spot lock. There's there's a school, there's a school. Kingfisher never lies. Mm. On this one, Roger just, well, it's not, I won't even have a go at you over that one. It's nothing you can do. It's a good fish though. That was a monster. buried you for a minute. I just, I just picked up I just picked up the beetle spin and started teabagging the bottom right where Roger dropped these big fish. It's not a real big fish but look I was just lifting up just dropping the bottom under the boat. I looked at the sound I seen an arch on it. This is a baby man compared to what you had. Look, he's one of our South Creek fish too. He's um, he's a long way from home. See his fins. Someone asked the other day. I, I'm terrible at this um, answering the YouTube questions, but someone asked the other day about the Bassett Vineyard, and it's like they just swim through the cracks. If anyone's listening, that wanted to know that question. He's onto a good fish. Not like nothing like the other one, though, eh? Nah. Still, they're, they're, they're nice bass we're pulling up now. We've got a little stretch of these bass. They're all about the same size, fun size. But that's the beauty of trawling. See, we were catching little tiny bass. We didn't want to catch tiny bass, so we we just whack your spot lock on, mate. So we. Uh, Mate, they're always welcome to bring someone up here. That's the thing about this river, there is millions of fish in it and very little fish and pressure. 
Bass fishermen tend to be a funny lot. They think that they own the place, but realistically, I mean, the bass allow you to catch them. I want to see one of those. I just love to know what that, whatever Roger dropped earlier was one of the biggest bass I've seen in, or seen hooked up in a long time. So. Yep, I'm on. So that's the beauty about the spot lock. It's the only thing I like about those encoders. Little fish, but while he's, Roger's still trying to get his off, I might get to drag another little mate out. Well, those big ones are smart, mate. They are. Uh... As soon as I've got that duck, I just get to drag them out of there. Yep. Don't muck around. So they're all silver, so they're all brand new to the system. It's all about making them fire, and that's why the hard bodies and divers are such a good little combination for these fish. Oh, well, I want to keep that one. That is a really nice little pond fish. While well, I got the camera on, I'll just explain. We're mostly going through hard bodies today when you're using the hard body lures. With the spinners, I've just jig head with an exposed hook. Roger's got a worm hook, so he's shaking into that weed where I'm fishing the outer edge. And when I work the hard body, I crank it. With this, with this, what I do is I, I try and slow it down and I try and go down layers. So now I'm out a bit, I'll let it drop a bit more. And I keep going down a layer, let it drop again. It's been on those little drops that the fish are biting. It's not always like this, but that's why you mix up your lures. Yep, yep. Yeah, the sonics of the hard bodies just create a fight. Where these things are more in your face, it's the flash. Oh, well, that's all right. We picked up, I think, about six fish just from the, where we started that, that net to here. And that was all because we seen a kingfisher land. The other thing, too, we could turn around and go back and do it again, but um, we're sort of more looking for fish today, not peppering. That's about the end of the weed bed. I wonder if there's anything on the stroke. Well, so far today, weed's the only thing that's really kicked off. And there's one tip here is west winds mean weed. When you get those big, strong westerlies, cold westerlies, these weed beds are so much warmer. So there's no insect hatches on a westerly. skinnies yeah and once again that's still weed why they're in there is because the water's warmer from the weed but you scoop that up with a net and there'll be little prawns and things in that weed there's no hatches going on there's no reason for bass to be anywhere else that was in mid water coming off five meters to four meters I was looking, you know, I was saying I could see fish at five metres, but they're not going to come up. Oh, well, I was wrong. The hit was really solid. Should be a perch, that deep. It could be bass. Silver. We're trolling back for a lot deeper water because we sort of worked out where the fish are. So that was good that Roger got that. Yeah. Look how silver he is though. They're just rolling in, mate. Just rolling in. I'm just saying this, Roger, a lot of bass fishing won't troll. But I use trolling as a tool. It's like a couple of hours down here today and we found one school that we want to chase all season 
we can follow them. We found two schools of small fish like these. And then we found a few perch as well. We've worked out these fish are holding on the weed bed, so we've just trawled across. We're too lazy to fish them now. Just trawled across them and straight away I'm on. It's only little, but he's heavy. Come on, come to Papa. Oh, he's dogging now. Yeah, I think he's just. I think he's got his mouth open. He's a little guy with his mouth open. Oh, he's a nice little perch, actually. We ain't got any big perch today, but we've got nice chunky ones. Oh, look at this! It's almost a double lure hookup. <laughs> That's your lure. <laughs> well, let's remove the fish first. I wonder why they got a tongue on these guys. Ah, oh, it's a moth. Look at that though. Now you can see why the bass like those Larry colours. Look at the orange, the white, the black. Hmm. And just that's just bass candy. Fly, 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 fly. Duh. Look at the action on that little lure. Yeah. On the way through this morning, there was a running tide, so we give this ten minutes and never got a. Never got a look, we dropped a little perch. So we just pulled up on the way back on the run out tide and first cast. Well not the second cast, third cast, the little bass. Yeah, you know, he was on before I even pulled the slack out. Come here. Quick couple of fish and then we're gone. Midwater bite run out tide. You on? So that, now we, seven o'clock this morning, eight o'clock this morning, oh, perch, bass perch. Eight o'clock this morning, we, 10 minutes here for a couple of little touches. We've been here for 30 seconds, two fish now. Cause all that water is running off the shallows and straight, straight into the mouth of, uh, mouth of the bass. Oh, the Chinaman's got one, look. Land it, land it, I hope he's got it. Big, big carp. Yeah. Oh, drop mine. It's stacked. Oh. No, that's what happened. Yeah, they're sw swimming in with it. I just dropped mine doing that. What's he got? Oh, a little bass. Oh, that's going. That's going in the bucket. I'm on a school over here, I think I've gone too wide then. So they're all the way along here. My school seems to be up in those ripples. Did he keep it? Did he keep it? Good man, good boy. It followed you all the way out, or you reckon you were on it? Because there was, a, there was actually a school of fish. Like right now, there's a school of fish on the sounder under us now. You know what perch are like? They love to follow you out, eh? Hey. They're between us and the boat now. Yep, there he is. 
I've seen that one on the sounder. So we drifted over. Oh, she's still on. Tiny. <laughs> the sound is good enough to show. That's just the everyday Lawrence, but it's good enough to show school if she's small. Yeah, it's under a thousand, eh? I like that live scope, but I've just got to get a sound or something. I mean, if, if I can see fish on any sound, are there fish? So look at that, look at that big school, just here. Yep, got him. <laughs> I just, I just sat the blade down until I seen the school. Look at it. That's the school of fish there. Ooh. I didn't even. I just sat it there under the boat, went school, lift, perch. Awesome. Awesome. Hey? Yeah. <laughs>